Hi, this show talks about books that feature mental health and mental illness topics. The discussion will be from the point of view of mental health professionals. There are many books that include this topic, and my hope is that more and more people know about them because they help to decrease the stigma and help people not feel so alone in their struggle. I am your host, Robin Tamanaha, licensed marriage and family therapist. Today, I will be talking about the book Rock Steady, My Brilliant Advice from My Bipolar Life by Ellen Forney, which is a self-help survival guide in the form of cartoons. Before delving into the book, I'd like to first give you the backstory about how this book ended up being an episode on this podcast. The beginning of January, I was at a local bookstore with another therapist searching for two newly released books. These two books were mentioned in the past episode, My Most Anticipated Reads for 2020. After I found the newly released books in the store, I went to the psychology section, as I always do, just to browse and see what they have. As I'm standing in this section, the other therapist I'm with starts pointing out some of the books, like, oh, look at this book and look at this book. I responded by mumbling clinical responses about some of the symptoms of the diagnoses in those books. During all of this, there was an adult sitting on the ground next to us scouring through books. You know how someone sometimes looks when they're scanning something with deep intent, knowing what they're searching for? That's how this person looked. After I mumbled some of my responses about the books to the other therapist I was with, the adult sit sitting on the floor looks up at me and asks, do you know about these books? I responded, yes. And then the person says, oh, good. Do you think you can help me find a book? I am looking for books on bipolar disorder. Immediately, I got excited, not just because someone wants me to help them select a book, but also because bipolar disorder is one of my specialties at my private practice. This person pretty much hit the jackpot with me, so I said, of course. As I'm scanning the shelves, the person says that they would like a book about bipolar disorder that has helpful information so that they can find out more about the diagnosis and to learn how to help an immediate family member who is struggling with it. I thought this was great because one of the best things a family member can do when trying to be supportive is to first educate themselves about the diagnosis. I saw this book, Rock Steady, and handed it to the person. This is one of the books I always recommend to people when they would like to know more about bipolar disorder. The other book I recommended was The Bipolar Disorder Survival Guide by David Miklowitz, which was not available in the store, so I think the person ended up just purchasing it online. I left the store thinking, why don't I make the book Rock Steady an episode, especially since I recommend it so often? And here we are. So the book Rock Steady is different than a lot of the other self-help books out there. One difference is that it's in cartoon form because the author is a cartoonist. Most of the books you're, you'll find are just filled with words and charts. This book is through drawings, so it conveys information about bipolar disorder in a visual format. If you're a visual learner, this is right up your alley. But even if you're not, the drawings definitely make a diagnosis that can be confusing more understandable. Second, this book is very clear and concise. If you're looking for a book about bipolar disorder that is not too heavy with information, get straight to the point, this might be a good one to check out. If you want a more in-depth book, I recommend The Bipolar Disorder Survival Guide. So there are multiple topics I'd like to discuss about this book, with the first being the book has a nice balance between education and examples of the topics described. Ellen provides examples in different ways. One, she uses her personal experience living with bipolar disorder to provide specific examples. Two, she shows it through drawings, such as a conversation through a series of panels, with each panel including the statement and responses between a therapist and client. And three, the use of drawings of symbols, such as a detailed drawing of a large tool belt with and within each pocket are different types of coping skills. 
These visualizations can help with recalling information, tips, and strategies that are suggested. Another portion of this book, Ellen mentions that she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder a little before her 30th birthday. It's not uncommon to be diagnosed with bipolar disorder in adulthood. There can be multiple factors that go into this. For some, they're originally diagnosed with depression, or maybe they were originally diagnosed with ADHD and the bipolar piece was missing from their diagnosis. ADHD is one of the diagnoses that's common with bipolar disorder. It's a complex diagnosis, and there's importance in meeting with a mental health professional who is familiar with bipolar disorder. But also, sometimes bipolar disorder isn't on anyone's radar as a possibility. For example, in bipolar 2, the symptoms don't significantly impact the individual's life, so others may not notice anything, and the individual is quite functional in their life and the responsibilities they have. However, this does not mean that the person's internal experience with symptoms isn't intense, because it is. This is a diagnosis where individuals can feel like they're taking orders from their own body or are driven by their emotions. Oftentimes, it's reflecting back and obtaining a timeline of life experiences, previous and current symptoms, and biological factors, which leads to the diagnosis. And this is something that the mental health professional does with the client over a series of sessions. Early diagnosis is always ideal and can happen, but for various reasons, this doesn't always happen. And sometimes individuals learn their diagnosis as they go through therapy. Another topic in this book is taking medications. I like how right off the bat, the chapter about medications address thoughts that naturally come up when taking medication. I like how it normalized how a person would wonder if they're weak, if they really need them, that someone may hate the thought of taking medications, and the concern or experience with complications from medications, such as side effects or forgetting to take them. When it comes to thoughts about taking medications, it's so important to process that. Being diagnosed is one thing, but then to begin taking medication or trying different medications to see which one is the best fit is a lot to take in emotionally. It's amazing how taking medications for the diagnosis brings about this, wow, it just got real experience. Then once that thought settles in, thoughts can then evolve into how the person feels about themselves, such as if they're a damaged person or damaged goods, or, oh my gosh, this is my life now. All of these thoughts are normal to have. In my, pra in my practice, when this comes up, I always emphasize hope and that the symptoms can be managed by the individual as well, not just the medications. This is never something to brush over, and all the thoughts and feelings that come up around this should be discussed because sometimes the individual is preoccupied with myths or misconceptions. So us mental health professionals can help clarify and correct what the individual may think about themselves, their diagnosis, and the outcome, aka their future, and what all of this will look like. Another thing I liked in this book was the explanations of different types of therapies. I'm going to speak about two of them because they are specific to four bipolar disorder. One type mentioned is interpersonal and social rhythm therapy, which was created specifically for bipolar disorder by Dr. Ellen Frank. This is a form of therapy that targets the experience of bipolar disorder by, one, regulating daily routines like sleep, eating, interacting with other people, and emphasizes how these routines link to mood states. And two, it makes the link between mood states and life events, which, according to research, does impact future episodes. Life events, both positive and negative, do impact future episodes. Throughout all of this, there's education, problem solving, and practicing of different strategies. The second type of therapy that the book described is functional family therapy, which was developed by David Miklowitz. This is the go-to therapy for when treating a family unit where one individual in the family is living with bipolar disorder. So in this type of therapy, the entire immediate family would attend therapy with the sole focus on ways the family can come together through communication skills and game planning for future episodes of the family member 
who is living with bipolar disorder. I can say that I've done both of these types of therapies with clients and families throughout my career as a therapist, and I've seen the positive impact it has. Another thing this book has is the use of illustrated metaphors to explain symptoms and mood episodes. Bipolar disorder can be confusing to understand because there's so many different components, different ways it can be expressed depending on the individual, and different levels of intensity from mild to severe. One example of an illustrated metaphor in the book is the use of a merry-go-round to explain different mood states along the bipolar spectrum. As we know, when a merry-go-round is on, the fake horses go up and down as the merry-go-round goes around and around. In the illustration, an individual is sitting on the horse on the merry-go-round, and the height of the person and their horse depicts if the person is experiencing mania, hypomania, a mixed state, and all the way down to depression. I felt like these illustrations make symptoms that seem confusing more understandable. The last thing that I want to mention is the use of resources in the book, navigating the mental health system and decreasing stigma. This book includes actionable steps, whether it be navigating the mental health system or tips on different types of coping skills and ways to view your identity and the diagnosis. When it comes to decreasing stigma, Ellen helped with this by sharing her own experience, including her own timeline with an episode, and also including accomplished and inspiring individuals who are living successfully with this diagnosis. All in all, I've always enjoyed this book. It's a really creative way to provide useful information about the diagnosis. I also like that it breaks down different pieces of the diagnosis into nice bite-sized understandable pieces. There are many other parts of the book that are great, so if you would like to know more, definitely check out this book. I'd also like to add that I'm personally really looking forward to the day that I can go back into a bookstore library. It's interesting that I'm reminiscing about my experience in a bookstore as we're now weeks into following the stay-at-home order by government officials in order to flatten the curve with coronavirus. For me, being surrounded by books provides a sense of calm, warmth, and is like a second home to me. However, I know and do fully support taking precautions to flatten the curve. This is a very stressful time with so many major changes met with periods of uncertainty, and we were not prepared for this complete overhaul to our lifestyle. I have uploaded a freebie on my private practice website in the form of an audio. This audio is a technique that might be helpful during times of uncertainty, like the one we're currently in. It includes validating your thoughts and feelings and some breathing. Please go to my website, robintamanahatherapy.com, if you would like to listen to the audio, as it might be helpful. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this episode was informative or helpful. If you have any book suggestions or books you would like discussed on this podcast, you can email it to booksbetweensessions at gmail.com. If you're a mental health professional and would like to be on the podcast, contact me at booksbetweensessions at gmail.com. Also, this podcast is not psychotherapy or counseling. If you need to speak with a professional, you should find one local to you and contact them directly. If this is an emergency, please call your local emergency number or go to your nearest emergency department. Thanks for listening.